The Rex Dockery Show, highlights of the 1983 Memphis State Tigers, with co-host Tom Stocker. The Rex Dockery Show is brought to you by Coca-Cola, Dr. Pepper, and Old Milwaukee. It is a beautiful afternoon here in Memphis as the Memphis State Tigers open their 1983 season against the arch rival from the South, the Rebels of Ole Miss. Hello again, everybody. I'm Tom Stalker, along with Tiger coach Rex Dockery. And coach, uh, this is it. This is what college football is all about. Tom, I'm very <laughs> excited. It's, uh, it's a treat to come out here with uh, our fans the way they are excited. I know Ole Miss fans are, and it's a uh, great game to start out the college football season. Coach, I sense an electricity and excitement around the Memphis State, Memphis itself, about the Memphis State football program that has been felt for a long time. Much more than since I've been here, Tom. I, it's a tribute to the community. They, they've really backed our program. They, uh, the players feel it, and, uh, and our players are going to do their part to make it worthwhile. Indeed. The Liberty Bowl today will be just filled with electricity and excitement about this big opener against these two arch rivals tonight. That's going to be a tough spot for a young kid like Danny Sparkman starting his very first varsity game ever as quarterback. Well, Tom, Danny has uh, worked very hard. Uh, He's worked hard all summer, and uh, he came back ready to play one position in spring. He's, he's got strengths, uh, as everybody knows. He, he's got a good arm, and uh, he runs the option pretty well, and he's got good speed. But he's, it's a first time out. First play, first play he'll ever take as a varsity player will be tonight. And uh, I've got a lot of confidence in him, and I know he's going to do a good job. Meanwhile, for the Rebels, for their quarterback, they've got some experience there. Two good quarterbacks, but starting will be Kent Austin. He's a good one. You expect Ole Miss to throw the football a lot. Well, Tom, I think they'll throw it. I think they'll try to establish a run also. But I think in Austin, they've got a great football player. I thought last year he'd be as good as it was in the South. And I haven't seen anything that changed my mind. He's a solid uh, person. As a person, he throws the ball well. He's a great, great leadership. That's going to put a lot of pressure on the Tiger uh, defensive rush, led by big old number 97, Tim Harris, out of Memphis Catholic. Well, Tim uh, had a good year last year, particularly the last four or five games. I think he's matured uh, since last spring. And uh, we need for him to have a good game uh, if we're going to contain their, their, their offense, both running and passing. Best of luck, Coach. Thank you, Tom. It doesn't get any better than this. Memphis State against Ole Miss. First half highlights coming up right after this. You know, when it's Memphis State against Ole Miss, you're going to draw a crowd, a crowd of 51,323 at the Liberty Bowl, 1,000 over capacity to see the 1983 season opener between these two arch, arch rivals. Opening kickoff in the ball game. Tigers open with the ball. Charles Greenhill touching the ball for the first time as a Tiger. After Danny Sparkman had his first pass batted back in his face, he comes back throwing. That's a great catch there, Tom, by Smokey Jordan, a senior from Mississippi, and I know it was a big catch for him, especially being from that state. I know he's very happy to make it. This is first and ten of the Tiger, 41. Nine yards for Eric Becton. Good job of Danny Sparkman sitting at the screen. Here's a third and three call. Good option to Danny. This is Eric Becton taking it down the sideline. Comes down to the Ole Miss 28-yard line, fourth and 13. Don Glosson, a 45-yard try. He was over two last year, but he starts out perfecto in 1983, and the Tigers take a 3-0 lead. Ole Miss coming back in his first drive, first and 10 at the Ole Miss 18. I think good tackle there with Chip Bowers. I thought our secondary time last year did an excellent job getting around the football. The next play, second and seven at the 21. Looking for James Harbor, but it's overthrown. Tigers get the ball back after a punt, first and 10, their own 38. Option again outside, good, good fake in there by a fullback, and Danny makes a good job on the pitch again. 12 yards of the first down, second and 15 from the Tiger 45. And that right out there to Jeff Womack. Glad to see him get back, Tom. He oh. looks, looks like he's coming back in the whole form. Later. That's a fumble snap there. I don't know, but I guess both teams had a little problem getting exchanged on last night's first game. Austin's pass underthrown for Holder. 
at the Ole Miss 23, third and eight. We kind of expected Ole Miss to come out throwing time, and they, they sprint out a little bit more than we expected. But uh, what a play there for Johnny Walker, senior from Memphis. That was uh, getting around the football, good breaking on the ball as it was thrown. We moved down late now, first quarter action, second and eight at the Memphis State 25. Rozell Clayton getting seven yards to the 32 yard line. We've got 50 seconds now left to go in the first quarter. Rozell, I think, has really made an excellent transition, Tom. He didn't gain as much yardage, maybe, with some other backs, but he blocked well. And he made two really big runs in the game. Didn't get the first time there on the sneaks. Of Stan Weaver on a fourth and one. And the first big break of the game as Timmy Moffitt calls for the fair catch. Lost the football. Ken Brown recovers at the Memphis at the Ole Miss 28. Uh, we've talked about it all the time, Tom, but the kicking game is such a factor. And although we almost beat our step in the kicking game last night, we were able to come up with some big points in the field goal position. And we got two fumbled punts. And that was the difference in the game. After Beckton got 10 on the first down, Sparkman getting five down to the seven yard line, second and seven. Play by Roger. Everything clogs up inside and he breaks it to the outside and just really just being a good runner. That was a smart move. So the Tigers take a 10 nothing lead as a gang high five for the Memphis State Tigers getting their first touchdown of the year. We move down to 8-14 left to go in the second quarter. Ken Austin, first and 10 of the zone 24. This is a play we uh, hadn't seen Ole Miss do a lot of. It's a uh, loaded play and uh, at Louisiana Tech we had not really seen that in films, but uh, they executed it well last night. Now second night of the Ole Miss 40, Austin to Moffitt. 27-yard gain as Ole Miss is now on the move. Really impressed with Moffitt. Uh, he really is an exciting football player in time. Really got good speed, catches the ball well. At the Tiger 31, second and eight. The reverse, Andre Rogers. Well executed play time, and we are supposed to have a trail, man. He just didn't get deep enough. He was too shallow. And uh, that was a big play in the drive right there. Tim Harris, I think, made the tackle from behind. That was good hustle. Down to the six-yard line, first and goal, and... Call sweep, and well, where contain was, they just did a good job blocking, and uh, few from gig out in the end zone. And, uh, this is a good comeback by Ole Miss. That cuts the lead down to 10-7. Pick it up later in the ball game where Stan Weaver has the punt blocked by Freddie Nunn. It's out of bounds at the Tiger 18, and all of a sudden, Tiger fans are going, oh, no, the kicking game again. Tom, we just can't afford to have something like that happen. we got to go to work on that. We just we missed a block out there, and they did a good job. They're going to capitalize on it. Here's Austin to Moffitt. Six yards down to the 22. And finally, a field goal try. Smith tries a 39-yarder. It's good. The game is tied at halftime. We'll be back with second-half highlights right after this. And all of a sudden, old Don Bramlett, former John Bramlett's son, used to play here, makes a big play. He was captain of our specialist teams, Tom, and that, what a big play to make for our football team. Second and 12 from the 41. Danny Sparkman to Crawford, 28-yard gain down to the 13, setting up now. This is a second and seven at the 10. That was a big call by Coach Ferris. He felt like the post route was open. And here's another move, a super move by Rosalind Bell to get back inside. We missed a block, and he just made up some yardage on his own. Here is second and goal. Beckton trying it, but doesn't get in. Our offensive line, Tom, I thought, was executed pass protection pretty well. We've got to get a little better knocking people back in short yards and goal line, but as a group, I thought they came off the ball. Rick Hackinger and Oliver, we went to that side, and Self and Long, and, and David East and Jeff Walker. All those six of those young men were in there quite a bit. So using the turnover, the Tigers come right back to tie it up. Here's Ole Miss on its next drive, first and 10 from the 20, as McGee gets only two yards. Now it's second and 13. A little screen and Tim Harris does a good job of smelling it out. Uh, Tim was all over the field last night, I thought, and he played an excellent game. In fact, our entire defensive line and our defense, Coach Wisdom them had a super plan and, and maintained it and kept their poise. Here's a second and ten play from the Ole Miss 47. Sparkman to Crawford for 11 yards. Now down to the 35-yard line, second and nine. That's Kurt Garrett. Uh, he looks like a big Mack truck rolling through there. He don't have great speed, but he's a pretty good-sized boy. Here's a big play, 50-yard field goal by Don Glosson. Just barely gets over the crossbar, but it puts the Tigers in front. Had he missed a coach, it would have been a tie ball game, and Ole Miss would have had the ball at the 33-yard line. As right there, Borky with the big hit. Well, Tom, last year we weren't able to make that big kick, and we had to, and that's just a difference. And Don's done it all year. I think he had 13 points and three for three in field goals. Humphreys gets only one yard after all that. This is third and 13 now, the Ole Miss five. A lot of pressure again by Tim Harris from the outside, and 
it's hard to throw uh, if you can put pressure on people. Tigers come back. Ole Miss 43, first and 10. That's Darrell Nelson after missing the pass. He came back, makes a big catch with a real tough to throw. He had to get down and get with it. First and 10 from the Rebel 33. This is a gorgeous run. Watch it. That's Puckin Williams. Uh, Transfer in here. He's been Northwest Union College. Puckin's had a little burst in his life, but to bounce back and do what he did, I'm very proud of him. That was Puckin's first carry ever as a Tiger, and first and goal from the two. Garrett gets his first Tiger touchdown ever as the Tigers up their lead to 10 points at 27 17. On the next Ole Miss drive from the Ole Miss 28, second and 15, Austin's pass batted down by Tim Harris. Again, it's, it's, so the Rebels have to punt, and again, the kicking game. Kicking game is, as we talk about, Tom, and I think particularly early in the year, it's always a factor. I mean, tried to spend a lot of time. I think Derek has stayed outside. He's going to score with a touchdown, but he tried to turn back up. But we didn't, we didn't have anyone like that in, in, in two, since two years I've been here. I don't think we've had a punt return go that far. So we're going to get better. That's a good. Oh, Derek Crawford it was his birthday last night, Tom. And uh, what a big time player he is. And there's a big third and 12 completion. Sparkman to Avant 16 yards in the first down. Danny continually converted those big third down situations. Her second and eight of the 32. Yeah, some of our defense did well. We, can, we, we stopped them fourth. And they had four of 16 opportunities on third down, which is a big down in football. Second and eight at the Ole Miss 19. And here's another gorgeous run. What Joe Woods, he's going to get two blocks on the arc. Joe's just now coming back with a start and tailback last spring. Had a hamstring, but. I'm glad to see that young man who had, was injured last year come back. As, as you know, Jeff Womack and Joe Woods is going to make a big contribution to our team four years old. With it. Tigers go 48 yards in seven plays, lead at 34-17. Now the Rebels try to come back from their own 21st and 10. Montgomery with the pass tip. And out the 32 of Ole Miss, first and 10. We had, I thought, pretty good containment last night. I thought our secondary really, we gave up some yardage. But we didn't get the big play. That's the most important thing, Tom. You can't give up the big play playing defense. Coach Hoke had our people backing up and playing good containment, and that was really important. Here's Ole Miss going for the home run. Number 16, Greg Sanders, perfect position. Well, Greg was our game captain for defense, a former starting quarterback, and one of the contribution he's made to our team, Tom. He's really worked hard. After the Tigers have to punt, this is from the Memphis State 29, second and 10. Donnie Elder uh, stops for a gain of only three, and uh, after a quarterback sack and fourth down, the Tigers get the ball back. Puckin Williams, 28 yards, beautiful run. That's good running and good blocking over here. Dwight Blaylock made his first start. Uh, from Mary's Georgia tied in with a former defensive end, and I thought blocked really well last night. And there's Kelvin Atkins, first carry as a Tiger, first and ten. He gets four. He's from Texarkana, Texas. Now it's second and six from the 29. Tall sweep. Puckin makes a good move. Dwight makes the block on the end, and... Uh, we, we, they played pretty tight on us last night, Tom. We felt like we could get outside based upon the, they playing so tight inside. On a third and three, Becton gets a first down, seven yards, down to the seven-yard line. Second and goal from the seven, from the six, Womack good. hitting just two, and he set up the, the field goal. Good tackle by the safety. I don't know who that was, but I thought he had a hole there, and all of a sudden it closed. Don Glosson, three for three in the field goal. This one... Puts icing on the cake for the Tigers as they lead 37-17. Ole Miss with his last gasp. This is first and 10 from the Memphis State 24. That's one thing that helps us a lot. I know all of our coaches did a good job playing a lot of players. And, and uh, I think we got a little pressure there. That's Tim Harris putting the pressure and Jeff Ellis. Uh, young man, I think he's got a great future here. Uh, coming in and making the sack. And uh, I think he's going to come on and get better every game. The firm of Ellis and Harris. Belongi in a quarterback, Kelvin Atkins gets four. And our last highlight, second and six, Memphis State 24, Brown for a yard. And the Tigers have done it. They have opened with a big season opening victory over the Ole Miss Rebels, 37-17. Back in the locker room after this. Uh, because there are a lot, a lot of heroes for the Tigers tonight. We got one of them, though, Tim Harris, number 97. Uh, earlier this week, you told me you're going to see the quarterback a lot. You did. Oh, yes, sir, I did. You know, they gave us the open outside, you know, and we just took advantage of it. You knew they were going to pass the ball a lot. Did that mean you guys could just go tee off all the time or what? Yes, it did. You know, I made a, a promise with Jeff Ellis. You know, he told me that me and him were going to get back there, so we made it back there a couple of times. <laughs> you guys held several meetings back there tonight. What, what about it? it? It seems like the greenness, the youth, and the Ole Miss offensive line was what the key was for the Memphis State defense. You're able to get through there. Well, I think that's probably it. You know, the offensive line, they put up a good fight against us, you know, but somehow we just happened to get outside. 
What about in the third quarter, though? All of a sudden, uh, Ole Miss had come back to tie to 10-10. Then they took a 17-10 lead. What was going through your mind then? Well, you know, Tom, we went through a lot of adversity last year. You know, we were able to overcome that now, you know, so. And we just got our heads together and said we're about ready to win this game. In other words, you're able to reach back and learn on things you learned last year. Yes, sir, we are. But it's got to feel good to be part of a history-making win for Memphis State. Yes, it does. Feels real good. And it's certainly not going to be the last, right? Right. <laughs> I got to be honest, folks. This is only our third winning show, and these things feel great. It's hard to hold back the smiles. And undefeated quarterback Danny Sparkman with us. And Danny, congratulations. Thank you, Tom. I really appreciate it. We uh, really went out tonight, and we offense did a good job executing, and we got the ball in the end zone, and the defense did an excellent job of keeping them out. So uh, we came up with a victory tonight. Your very first passing attempt blocked at the line of scrimmage. Uh, what went through your mind? Oh, boy. Here we go. Well, it was a little, just a little hook pattern with a tight end, and uh, one of the guys got their hands up and knocked it down, and I just kind of, you know, sat there, and I said, well, we've learned to overcome things like that. We came back the next couple plays, and we did. We overcome it. Indeed, you came right back firing. You didn't hesitate. Uh, what went through your mind going through your first start tonight? Well, I, it's natural to be nervous in your first start. I was nervous first series. I started settling down after that. Uh, the players really gave me support and kept me calm, and uh, so I just went out there and did what the coaches taught me to do and executed. In the second half, you fell behind 17 10, but you got the big break, and I knew... You said in the past the Tigers had let those breaks go. You couldn't let that happen this time. Yeah, we fell behind 17 to 10, but there was, there was no doubt in my mind that we were going to come back. Uh, I knew the offensive line was doing an excellent job. We, uh, we had a stun there for a little while in, in the second half, but uh, we overcame it. Like We're, we're com overcoming things. Like last year, we would have probably lost the game. But this year, we're, uh, we're coming back. We've got a, a, a poised team, and we're, we're really looking forward to the rest of the season. And, of course, with the stable of running backs you got, my goodness, that makes a quarter, any quarterback's job easier. That's true. We've got Pumpkin Williams to do the outstanding job tonight from Humboldt. He, he came in in the second half and did a, just did a great job running. Jeff Womack coming off of a knee surgery, that he looked great tonight. He, looked, he did a really great job. Oh, we've got a fine group of running backs tonight. It's really nice to know that you're looking back there and you can see those guys back there. Danny, good job. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay, everybody, quarterback Danny Sparkman will be back to talk with Tiger coach Rex Dockery right after this. Last year, the thrill of victory. We were all feeling for the first time in quite a while, and here we start out the 1983 season with a big, big history-making win over Ole Miss. Well, I might say the carryover of that win meant a lot to our football team. You and I talked about that uh, eight or nine months ago. And I think starting then, from recruiting right on through winning program and spring practices, the players remembered what it felt like to win, and they wanted to do it again. You opened the game so well, jumping out to a 10-0 lead, and uh, you were in very well in control, but then Ole Miss came right back and uh, made it a ball game. What went through your mind then at halftime when they came back to tie it at 10-10? Well, I thought they showed a lot of poise, Tom, because I thought we had a chance to jump out on them, and then they got that uh, couple of big plays and a good kickoff return, and uh, they showed a lot of poise and class coming back like that and tying us. But, and then when they went ahead, I really got nervous, but Coach Paris made a good call there on a post route to Crawford, and got us down and got a touchdown and Glossin made the 50-yard field goal and that was you know once there was just something on the sideline once that happened and then Kamas kicked it off deep in the end zone and I kind of from then on we kind of took the upper end of it exactly because the 50-yarder just snuck over the goal post had he not made it it would have been still a tie ball game and the ball much farther out for Ole Miss well as you know we've not made many of them kicks Tom uh, in the last couple of years and, uh, and particularly in critical situations tonight we did and and that's that's a credit like i'm saying uh, it was everybody on the team contributed well, you know it's hard to pick out any one guy that, oh exactly and uh but that was a big kick and it, it was a big factor in us i think getting ahead and feeling like we could do it then and i know one thing memphis state fans delighted in the, tonight uh, was the stable of running backs williams beckton womack on down the line you had depth there and it showed well, Coach Sharp has done a good job with their backs, and he works a lot of them. Sometimes I say, Coach Sharp, when are we going to get all them guys ready? But uh, <laughs> tonight, it paid off. He wanted to get them in the game, and uh, they were fresh. And I think kind of the change of pace with all of them out there was kind of warm. I think it was a difference in the game. I really do. The, the freshness of those backs hitting, you know, running with the football really helped us. And Danny Sparkman, for a sophomore, showed a lot of poise out there. His very first pass was batted back in his face, and he came right back up and went back at it again. Didn't, didn't hesitate. Danny's got a knack, Tom, for playing better in games than he does in practice. <laughs> yeah, it drives me crazy in practice sometimes, but he's, he did that last year in the freshman games. I used to watch him warm right there up, up at Carrieville, and he pregame would uh, look like he uh, couldn't throw it five yards, but he's got a way of performing uh, during the game, and 
He's a competitor, and uh, I was real proud of his boys. And when you don't have any turnovers, Tom, that's a big factor. It's now coming up. The nationally ranked Tar Heels of North Carolina in Chapel Hill next weekend. Well, they, I don't know how they did today or tonight, but they really have a fine football team. We watched them in the summer, and they, you know, I was really impressed with them. Of course, we played them two years ago when I was at Tech, and I thought they had one of the better teams in the country then, and they've, they've continued to build onto that. And we'll have our hands full, but I'm going to enjoy this game. I told the players I don't want them to celebrate after victory. It's something we talk about all week and what it's like to win and how good it feels, and I want them to enjoy it tonight, and we'll come back and go to work in North Carolina tomorrow. Exactly. Next week, the Tigers take on Stott Stankavage and Company over in Chapel Hill against the North Carolina Tar Heels. We'll be here right here on Channel 3 with all the highlights of that game. Until next week, for Coach Dockery, Tom Stalker saying thanks for listening. Good night, everybody. has been the Rex Dockery Show. Highlights of the 1983 Memphis State Tigers with co-host Tom Stocker. The Rex Dockery Show was brought to you by Old Milwaukee, Coca-Cola, and Dr. Pepper. Rex Dockery Show, highlights of the 1983 Memphis State Tigers, with co-host Tom Stocker. The Rex Dockery Show is brought to you by Dr. Pepper, Metal Vent, Coca-Cola, and Old Milwaukee. A beautiful, sun-drenched afternoon here at picturesque and historic Keenan Stadium on the campus of the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill as the Memphis State Tigers take on the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Hello again, everyone. I'm Tom Stocker, along with Tiger coach Rex Stocker. He will coach Boyd by the big win last week. Here we go, taking a, on a team that over the last four years has the eighth best winning percentage in the country. Well, I think they've done a super job here. they got a great spirit, and Dick Crum came in here five, six years ago, and there's really increased their tradition and they've got a great winning team they've been to a lot of bowls and they know how to win it'll be an interesting game but well, the Tigers learned have learned how to win as well especially with the big 20 point win last week thanks to big play men like number nine Derek Crawford well Derek I've uh, been very happy with him Tom he's really gotten better from a year ago uh, last week was his birthday I told him that was a nice present and uh, I I think he's, he's got to have some big plays for us today, both in the kicking game and in the passing game. He's got to do a good job. But the defense uh, for North Carolina last year, second in the nation, one of the reasons on the off on the defensive line is Fuller. He's a good one. Well, Fuller is uh, one of the most dominating players I've seen in a couple of years, Tom. Just watched him on film. We watched him all summer. He's a he's a class person. He's a very intelligent athlete. Got super quickness. Not a real big guy. 6'4", 250, if you don't call that real big. But he's a great player and a uh, tribute to college football. They've got a bunch of tailbacks. In fact, over the last 10 years, each of the last 10 years, North Carolina's had a tailback gain over 1,000 yards. This year, number one tailback appears to be Ethan Horton, played in the shadow of, of Kelvin Bryant, but he's a star in his own. Well, he's, uh, I think, been the most valuable player the last two bowl games they've played in. He'll be a junior. He's he's 6'4", about 225, 230 time, and uh, to do a good job today, we've got to have a lot of people around the ball and tackling on because he's going to drag some people around if we don't. And they're going to need leadership by the guys in the defensive line like Greg Montgomery, number 54. Well, Greg's been a very stabilizing force for our football team since I've been here, Tom. He plays consistently well every week, and of course, he's got a big challenge today with the offensive front they've got, and all of our defensive linemen, but particularly Greg, I think, with his leadership, we've got to play tough in there to hold them, keep their ground game down. It's like they cut a hole in the forest and put a football stadium here. Beautiful facility. We'll be back with first half highlights right after this. They say in this part of the country the sky is Carolina blue, as some Carolina blue balloons head skyward there in Chapel Hill. Capacity crowd on hand, 49,000, the home opener for the Tar Heels in 1983. And Coach, you knew coming into this game this was going to be a, a tough task, and the Tigers open up with the ball as Rodgers kicks off to Charles Greenhill. Tom, they're a very class outfit uh, from the time we got there. The whole deal. They, they, they do a great job with their players. They're cool to all of them. 
12-yard return for Charles as he gets the ball up to the Tiger 15-yard line. First play from offense now for Memphis State, Danny Sparkman. We came out, Tom, and couldn't really establish anything. They took a few things away from us. Uh, Got to give credit to the defense that they were well prepared, and we might have had too much for our offense to do, but uh, we came out, and they took some things away from us, and Stan, I thought we were really punting well yesterday. Really had a good day punting. This one, a 54-yarder. And out of all this, Walter Black is only able to get five yards on the return. That was good coverage. Uh, that was a good job getting downfield. Second play on the drive for Carolina. First and ten from the 48. Ethan Horton. Their offensive line, Tom, uh, established right at us early in the game. I thought our defense really hung in the well for the number of plays that we had to play. But uh, there's a super tackle over there on the outside. Uh, Tim Harris. I thought Tim Harris really played exceptionally well in the game, Tom. Later on the drive. Here's protection. That's Tim getting his hands up, knocking the ball down, and that's a super play where the quarterback just following through and missed a few tackles, and this put him in good field position. It got him a first down, no less, down to the 11-yard line. Now it's third and one from the two, and Ethan Horton on second effort gets the touchdown, and Carolina leads 7-0. A 59-yard drive would prove to be their longest drive of the day. The Tigers come back. This is two drives later. Roswell Clayton with a five-yard gain. Our offensive line, again, Tom, as I said, we just didn't come off the ball. There were some things uh, right there. I thought we came off the ball, and Rosell breaks it outside, and they got excellent pursuit. They were, I think, ranked second in the nation last year defensively, and uh, they, they looked very good to me, Tom. Stan Weaver, from his own 36, a 41-yard punt in Black. It's a three-yard return. Good job of Black getting on the ball. If we just put in our hair quicker, we had a chance of getting that ball. They did that twice in the afternoon. It was not, uh, it was a time when Carolina was starting to make some mistakes and the Tigers were able to capitalize. Right there, Colson got good, nothing. As Jim cuts back, uh, super tackle by him. And now Stan Cavage to Smith in a 12-yard gain as we move now to second quarter action. Later in the drive, first and goal from the 14. A good pass out there. There's a big play by Tim getting his hands up. He's got a, he's so tall, he's got a chance of getting his hands on whatever pass is thrown. And that was a big play for us. And, they kick a field goal, and they're going to take the lead here 10 minutes in time. Brooks Barwick, a 25-yarder. Now the Tigers get the ball back. This is the second play of the drive on a first and five. Williams. They took away our option play, Tom. Uh, we've got to do a better job of where we can execute it. We didn't do a very good job yesterday in handling the option play. Here comes the first Tiger first down of the afternoon. Came 17 minutes into the game. A diving catch by Derek Crawford. Good protection. I thought our line overall protected pretty well yesterday, Tom. We just didn't execute as well in the passing game itself. I thought the line protected, uh, considering the opponents, pretty good. That was a four-yard gain to Nelson. Now third and six. You can watch it. Watch number 28 coming to your screen. Good there protection, good time. That's a good throw by Danny. And super catch over here for Clyde Avey. And another first down at the Carolina 38-yard line. That's where we pick it up here with Punkin Williams. This is a sprint draw and good protection blocking by the line. And Punkin breaks it back and picks up about eight yards. This is the only drive we really had. It was an 80-yard drive, Tom. And Longest drive of the day for either team coach. Second and eight. Danny Sparkler with a four-yard gain on the option. It was uh, the longest again for Carolina. It was 50, 59 yards. And now a third and four. Here's a big play here, but Danny sit in the pocket. And Darryl Nelson catches the ball, turns up field, and, and pulls, which we've tried to coach him to do, and pulls up for another five yards. It gets a total of 10 on the play to the nine-yard line. First and goal, Tigers. This is a tall sweep by Kenny Brown. Good blocking out here outside. Pulls down there about another three yards. And then on the 12th play of the drive, Coach. Good execution, Danny. Throws in there to 